So, Trooper, we're going to have a, a voir dire of you, sir. We're, Mr. Lally's going to ask you some questions. Mr. Jackson's going to ask you some questions. You'll be shown a video. Okay. okay. All right, Mr. Lally. Now, Trooper Paul, as I was asking you before, uh, with respect to um, have you had occasion to uh, see a ring video from Mr. O'Keefe's house on One Meadows Avenue? Picking a defendant uh, or the defendant's vehicle backing out of uh, a garage while snow was falling. Yes. Now, in addition to that, as you've already testified to, uh, you made observations of the defendant's vehicle in the uh, Cannon Police Department garage on February 1st. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and, Your Honor, with the court's permission, uh, may we play the video at this time? Yes. Your Honor, at the same time, I'll stipulate to the video. Well, I, I want to see it for, for purposes of this board, dear. And in fact, I'd like to see the version that the defendants have with the focusing in on the tire. Understood. <laughs> Both. Go ahead, Ms. Gilman. You show yours, and then I'm going to ask for the defense. One, two, three. One, five, three. Now, Trooper, from your observations from this video, at some point, uh, this vehicle either comes close or makes contact with uh, Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle. Is that correct? Yes. Now, in addition to uh, your observations of this video and your observations of the defendant's vehicle, at some point, uh, have you also seen photographs of Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? Yes. And is your understanding that those photographs of Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle were taken by uh, State Police Crime Scene Services on February 3rd? Is that correct? Yes. Now, with reference uh, to your observations in this vehicle, what I'm going to ask you is that in regard to uh, the significance, uh, the reserve, <coughs> significance of the impact of the two vehicles. In respect to Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle, what, if anything, did you observe uh, on his vehicle at that time? At the, the photos or now? Uh, right now. Oh, right now. Uh, there was snow on the vehicle. And then with respect to the contact between the defendant's vehicle and the uh, victim, Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle, what, if anything, did you observe to occur with relation to the snow based on the significance of the impact between the two? Uh, the snow doesn't move. Uh, and Ms. Gilman, if you could press play at this time. All right. Can I see the other video? Oh. Please. Okay. Yes, I, I think it's on. I know it's in evidence, but I think it's on your computer, your hard drive. All right. Thank you. Okay, could you turn the lights on, please? Uh, Your Honor, if I could, there's just uh, two photographs that I'd like to present sure. for these purposes. Uh, Ms. Gilman, if I could have uh, what's now been marked as Exhibit 549. And before you do that, um, what is the exhibit we just saw through your IT person? Your Honor, the same exhibit. Uh, it has not been enhanced in any way. It was just magnified for purposes of this, of showing it. In other words, the magnification is not embedded in the video. Okay. Same video. Okay. We just magnify it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Lally.
And Trooper, do you recognize what's up on the screen now? Yes. And what are we looking at and which area of the vehicle are we looking at? Um, it's the rear, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, John O'Keefe's car. Uh, the driver's side, is that correct? Yes. And what, if any, uh, relationship does this portion of the vehicle we're looking at here have in relation to the uh, video that we just watched? Um, it was faced, uh, well, can you see it all from... Right, what was the answer? It I didn't was, hear Sorry, it was, it was faced kind of the same way you see the back left rear corner of the vehicle as you do in this picture here. And this gentleman, if I can have uh, what's now been marked as Exhibit 559... And sir, is this the same uh, driver's side rear uh, of this Rokey's vehicle? Yes, it is. Now, as far as uh, your observations of these photographs, uh, what, if any, damage did you observe uh, to Mr. Rokey's vehicle in either the last exhibit or this exhibit itself? Uh, there was no damage. Now, as far as the uh, impact, uh, let me ask, as far as the damage that you observed to the taillight area of uh, the defendant's vehicle, uh, what, if any, opinion do you have as to the uh, amount of force uh, necessary uh, in order to cause that damage? Objection. We need a foundation on this. So, Trooper, over the course of your, I'm sorry, how many uh, crashes have you investigated over the, over your time? With the, uh, as far as you know? I've been primary on 196 crashes. And I know I'd asked you before about pedestrian crashes. Uh, fair to say most of the remainder, if not all the remainder, involves uh, vehicles colliding with other vehicles. Correct. Now, with respect uh, to that experience in relation uh, to uh, vehicle crashes, uh, what, if any, uh, training or knowledge do you have in regard to uh, sort of uh, physical forces uh, of vehicles in a collision sequence and what kind of damage you would anticipate? So, obviously, the higher the speed, the more damage. The lower speed, the less damage. Um, and uh, what, if any, um, from the observation uh, that you made in that video and the observations uh, that you made uh, of the defense vehicle, uh, what you observed in the video, was that consistent with the damage that you observed uh, to the defense vehicle? Objection. So, I'm going to allow this for voir dire. I just need to hear this information. Understood, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, is not consistent with the uh, the tail light in this collision. And why not? Uh, for one thing, these the collision the tail light is let's say forty two to fifty inches off the ground. So that vehicle would have to have damage forty two to fifty inches off the ground because they would have had to contact each other in the same distance from the ground. And there's no dis there's no damage to that vehicle. Um, so if the tail light breaks, it should leave some sort of scratching maybe a dent, something on, some sort of damage to that vehicle should have occurred. And <clears throat> with respect to, uh, I think you just answered it. So as far as uh, Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle, what kind of damage would you expect from an impact significant enough to break uh, the plastic on the tail light of the defense vehicle? Uh, it would be probably a higher speed than what we saw. Yeah, uh, for purposes of the wide year, I need to hear all of this. Go ahead. A higher speed than what we probably would saw in there. If it's not, it was minimal. Maybe it would crack a tail light or something like that, but it wouldn't. I mean, the damage is different. Um, and also, you know, there we have a bumper that's also in the way, too. And, and to that point, Trooper, when it comes to a bumper, uh, from a functional standpoint, what is a bumper and, and, and what does it do with respect to a vehicle and a collision sequence? Um, the bumper is, you know, it's basically meant as another cushion to absorb the impact to another vehicle from one vehicle to another vehicle. Um, and it kind of sticks out to kind of also preserve whatever, you know, the tail lights and everything else and the damage on top of it. So in order, um, from your experience as far as uh, responding and investigating collisions, uh, specifically collisions between motor vehicles, um, the speed that you observe the defendant's vehicle traveling in that video what, if any, relationship does that have specifically as also as to the bumper, uh, as to the damage that you observed the defendant's vehicle? Um, so if you look at the defendant's vehicle, there is a scratch mark that is along the left side of, starts from her bumper around the rear. That could be consistently with his hit his bumper that would be around the same height level. Um, they also has, he has a like little ridge there on his bumper. So that bumper could have been hit that little ridge. Um, and also, the bumper in itself in here is a different material. Hers is a little lighter, like a glossy colored paint. This is more a duller flat finish. So 
it might have some why it would show up on her bumper more than it would show up on his bumper. And uh, finally, sir, in, in your opinion, um, <clears throat> the damage to the defendant's taillight, is, uh, is that something that could have occurred or could have uh, been caused uh, by the crash or the, the contact of the vehicles that you observed in that video? Objection. No. So again, this is why I Mr. Jackson going in here. No. And again, sir, why not? Um, for a thing, the bumpers, they had, you have to go push through the bumpers in order to hit the taillight against the other vehicle. And there's no damage to that significant damage to a bumper in order to push back into the car. And again, there was no snow on the vehicle. <clears throat> By that, I mean Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle that even came off the vehicle that you observed during the course of that contact between the two vehicles. That's correct. I have nothing further on All right, Mr. Jackson. Did you ever put the two cars together? I did not. No, you didn't, did you? You didn't. You never tested whether or not the SUV would match up with the Traverse, did you? What do you mean? You just said, oh, look, the, one of them has matte finish, one of them has glossy finish, so it couldn't have happened, right? No, I didn't, I'm confused by the question. I'm talking about the tail light. Right. We're talking about the tail light. Yeah. Are we talking about the tail? Are we talking about the bumper? Yeah, we were talking about the tail light. So, one person at a time, you both are talking over each other. Um, you started talking about the bumpers. Yes. You said, well, one has matte finish and one has glossy finish, right? Yes. And you said, well, you'd expect one of them to like slide off of each other and they could have done this and they could have done that, right? Not slide off each other. You were suggesting that the two cars wouldn't match up such that the taillight could make contact with any part of the, of the traverse. That's what you were suggesting. I'm saying it didn't match up because of, there's no damage to the traverse. You didn't test whether or not the, the lens, the right rear lens on the SUV could match up to any part of the Traverse, right? And make contact, physical contact with it, right? When I see a picture of the Traverse, yes, no. when I see the picture you know, of the Traverse. This is a voir dire. I need the information, Mr. You asked me a question. Yeah, I said, I when yes I no question, Trooper. I don't think so, but. Mr. Jackson, just for... Uh, there's no jury here. This is, this, is for, this is for purposes of what I have to rule on. The more information I have, the better off I am in being able to rule on. Right, let me take a breath. So this is, and this, is, this is you trying to keep the evidence out. So you want to give me the information. Understood. Did you or did you not ever do a test where you backed the, the Lexus up against the Traverse? We did not. Did you or did you not ever do a test where you put the two cars together and measured them. No. Did you ever measure the taillight of the SUV, the black SUV, against the, any, any area on that traverse? No. Did you ever do any force multiplier tests to determine the forces necessary to crack the SUV's convex taillight? No. Did you ever do any testing to determine whether or not a plastic taillight under how much pressure a plastic taillight would need to be subjected before it would crack? No. Did you ever do any testing to determine whether or not if a taillight, if a plastic taillight came in contact with a metallic portion of another SUV, whether it would leave any mark? I haven't done any tests, and I've seen crashes where headlights have struck other vehicles. That's okay. kind of where the experience comes from. Fair enough. But those, I'm guessing that those crashes are probably different speeds and higher speeds. Not this, right? I've had multiple crashes at different speeds. So, have you ever well, had yes. a crash where you've investigated the Massachusetts State Police has been brought in to investigate a crash where the car was going in reverse at about a half a mile an hour? Half a mile an hour? Whatever that was. You say, you're, are you saying the SUV is, Lexus is going half a mile per hour? Well, you're the reconstructionist. Give me an estimate of how fast you think that SUV was going at the point of contact with the Traverse. Maybe like one, two miles per hour. Okay, fair enough. Have you ever been uh, called in to a crash, to investigate a crash, where the cars have collided at one mile an hour? At one, I've had pedestrian crashes that have been at a very low speed. Okay, that wasn't my question. That wasn't quite my question. Okay. My question is, have you been called in to a crash involving two vehicles yeah. that have made contact at about a mile an hour? I have seen testing for vehicles at low speeds 
So next thing I've been called to a crash, it, it, I go to fatality crashes, but I have seen testing for fuels at low, pe low speed impacts. Okay. Like how low speed? Like just the bump. So like this? Yes. Did you see any damage? Yes. All right. Well, minimal damage. Right. In what circumstances? Minimal damage like, I don't know, like a cracked tail light. No, like just a little bit of rub, rub off on the paint. Right. Or you might see nothing, right? Yes. You've certainly seen circumstances in which two cars come in contact and there's absolutely no, there's no physical damage to either car. Nothing observable, right? Have I gone to sure. crashes? Has seen no physical damage on a car? Or just in, I'm sorry, or just in common sense, just everyday life. Where one car backs into another car at the jiffy lube, makes contact, and drives away, and there's no damage. Not normally. It's usually something with car and car impacts. Like what's the something? A crack or a paint, something chip, scratches. Right. Yeah. So if you put a piece of metal in that scenario, if you put a piece of metal, steel, right, uh -huh. against a piece of plastic, which one do you think is going to give way first? You'll still see some damage to the, both vehicles which at a speed. Would, which one would give way first? Between metal, depends what speeds. I'm and what we're talking about, you're just saying plastic and metal. You're giving a, a pretty general broad plastic and metal Paul, analysis here. You admit, you got to agree with me, that there are circumstances, is circumstances in which low speed, very, very low speed contact between two cars can certainly leave damage on one and not damage on the other, damage on both, or no damage on either one. Observe. Yes, I actually I just said in, this, in a situation where the scratch on the side of her car right. had a scratch mark and his doesn't appear to have anything. And you said under questioning by Mr. Lally that certain circumstances like this could lead to a lens material, right, plastic material cracking, right? Say again, like on least Just a few minutes ago, Mr. Lally. I'm just going to answer your question. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Lally asked you a question a few minutes ago, and you indicated that something might show up on a bumper. Something might, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, something might, like a taillight, uh, might actually crack, correct? At a low speed impact. A taillight might crack at a low speed impact? Correct. Yeah, it might crack. Okay, now, Mr. Lally also said you saw this video uh, where the cars come close to or make contact, right? That's how we worded the question. Remember that? Come close, yep. Which one, which one is it? Did it come close or did it make contact? I said it might. I don't know what, if that scratch from the side is. It's something that's consistent with the, with the height of the bumper. Like I said, I didn't measure them from side by side, but you can clearly see there's a scratch on the side, and that's something that looks like that would come back. So as I look at the bumper, and I see the bumper, and it has that little divot, and I look at her, t her side of her car with that scratch mark, that kind of lines up a little bit of why that could be where that was from. I thought you said there was no damage on that car, on the Traverse. There is no damage, and that's why I went to the why there's the two different paint materials there that why one could have showed up on her car because it's that flat, the, the, the glossy paint on there, and it could have scratched on it. While well, you have something that's a little more rougher texture with like a flat, you know, flat color on there so that you, wouldn't leave on there. So you just described the circumstance in which two cars come in contact, you don't see any observable damage on one, and you do on the other. That's what I, you I just, just and I, right? I, Yeah, I suggested that when you said, asked me that a second ago. Yes. Um, with regard to the video, let's get back to the question that I asked, which was, in that video, did the SUV come close to, or did it come in contact with the Traverse? Again, I, I don't know, because I'm saying based off the damage that is something consistent with that. So they, most likely it did come in contact with the bumper to bumper, but I don't know to family because there is no damage to his car but it's something that, that could explain why there's a scratch mark alongside the right rear side of his car, did right her see, car. Did you see the tire move, sir? Did you see the wheel on the traverse move in that video? No, I, I can't see the, the wheel move. I beg your pardon? I didn't, I didn't see it move. I didn't, I mean, if I did, I didn't observe it moving. If it, if it moved, it moved. I didn't observe it moving. I wasn't looking at the wheel. When was the first time you saw that video? Um... I don't really know. It was, it was a, it's been a little while. Well, I don't know what a little while means. Like a year ago, I think. Okay. So you saw that video a year ago. Did you put anything about that video in your report, which is 
wherever it is, right here. I'm looking at your entire CARS report. Did you put anything in that in this CARS report about watching that video? No, because I, I watched the video like after the report was done, and I honestly I watched it first time on Court TV. So, so who on Court TV during this trial? Like prior here. Prior, no, when it was on TV at some point. When did you and Mr. Lally have a discussion about you testifying about this video? That was a what a couple weeks ago. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. A couple of weeks ago. What's a couple of weeks ago? Is it ten days ago? Days ago, two weeks ago. I mean, two weeks ago. A couple. Okay. Two. Where did, you, where did you two meet? At the DA's office. Was that at your request, or was at that at Mr. Lally's request? It was a pre-conference hearing, or pre-trial hearing. Right. Well, those are pre-trial conference. Sorry. Done. So, yes. We're talking over each other. We're trying not to talk over each other. I'm trying not either. Let's both try harder. Okay. <laughs> Who set up the meeting? From my pre-trial. Yes. Okay. Paul. Um, Adam Lally. Who was at the meeting? Um, everybody right, sitting right here, uh, Lieutenant Tully. Lieutenant Tully, you, Adam Lally, Laura McLaughlin. I'm guessing Ms. Gilman was not there. Right? She was not there, correct. Did Mr. Lally show you this video at that meeting? Yes. Did he tell you that he intended to ask you some questions about this video at that meeting? Yes. Did he ask you whether or not you could render an opinion as to whether or not the impact that you saw or lack thereof, whatever the case may be, was consistent or inconsistent with damage to the taillight? Yes. Did you tell him that you would give him such opinion if called upon at trial? Yes. Did anybody take any notes? I don't know. Were you taking notes? Yes. Where are those notes, Trooper Paul? I think I just, more well, notes not on this specifically, but just, you know, make sure I had, you know, my everything checks and balance, and for what I want to talk about, what we're going to make, talk about. Make sure you had what? My checks and balances, sorry. Checks and balances? Just to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm more on the same page or what we, or what we understand what, what's going on in the trial. You want to make sure that you're on the same page with Mr. Lally about what's going on in the trial? Right? Yes. All right. Uh, did Mr. Lally take those? I have no idea. You were watching him. I mean, was he writing something down? I wasn't paying attention to his note taken. Ms. McLaughlin was there. Was she taking notes? I don't know. You didn't see her either? I don't know if there were people who were taking notes, writing stuff down, or what, what they're writing stuff down in relation to our, our, our little conference. Did you give him an opinion? We've asked whether or not you were asked to give an opinion, and you said, yes, 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 I was. Yep. Did you give an opinion at that meeting about whether or not you believe, in, in your opinion, uh, the contact between the SUV and the Traverse, the Lexus and the Traverse, could result in the damage to the tail in damage to the tail light. Yes. What did you tell him in the meeting? What we talked about already in the stand here. Okay. So what you related to him was exactly what you've relayed in this court. Yes. All right. And he asked you, sorry, he told you that he was going to ask, I'm going to ask you to look at the video, correct? Yes. You're going to be asked a series of questions about that video, correct? He asked, he told me the video, and he said, okay, this is the video. This is what they, they think the taillight was broken. Um, and these are the pictures I've hit of his car that they take. So they asked my opinion on, do you think that's where a taillight would be broken? And he said, and he told you, you need to, to make sure that you tell the jurors that couldn't have happened in this impact, right? He didn't tell me I'd make sure jurors, I mean, that's my opinion on, I don't, it doesn't appear to happen in that video. Did he tell you that it would be helpful to the prosecution if you said that it would be, I'm sorry, that, that it was inconsistent with the taillight break? Objection. <laughs> I'm going to allow it. Did he tell you it would be helpful to the case if you said that? No. But you knew it would be, right? I'm just stating what I saw on my my professional opinion on what it is. It's, if, it, if it looked like it was consistent, I would say it's consistent. If it wasn't consistent, it's not consistent. Um, I'm, I'm sure not going to. I'm sure that's what you would say. Okay, so comments are not appropriate for the jury. They're also not very good for me, Mr. Okay. Jackson. Okay, um, did you formalize your new opinion? Because this is a new opinion, right? You've never been asked this opinion before. 
Yes. Did you formalize this new opinion in any kind of report or memorialize it in any way? No. Did Mr. Lally ask you to create a report of some sort that you could then turn over to the defense so that we would know that you have a new opinion that you're going to testify about? No. <clears throat> Did you save those notes that you took about making sure that you were on the same page as Mr. Lally? That's, I mean, yeah, I saved mine. Where are they? They're my report. They're in your report? Yeah, as I was writing a report, I just kind of like just, you know, highlighted the stuff that I want to make sure I'm, I memorize and remember my report. Okay. I'm talking about notes specifically about this video, seeing this video and rendering a new opinion about this video. No, I didn't have notes specifically about this video. I, see, I didn't write anything down saying I must do this on this video. Did you write anything down about the new opinion that you would come up with related to this video? No, I did not. I'm just moving on. Yep. And your opinion, ultimately, that you imparted to Mr. Lally in that meeting was that the car did not move and the snow did not move, correct? Correct. That's all I have. All right. Did you want to follow up at all, Mr. Lally? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right. So, Trooper, you are all set for today. We will see you Monday morning. Thank you. Okay. So you're moving to exclude this. I'll hear you, Mr. Jackson. Your Honor, it's very clear that um, this is a blatant violation. Commonwealth has at least the, the obligation to provide us with any new opinions that any expert's going to testify to on direct examination. They've known about this witness for not months, for a year, for a couple of years. They've known exactly what this witness has, has uh, memorialized in his official report. They knew that we, the only thing that we had was the official report. They met with them two weeks ago. This has become a pattern of conduct by the Commonwealth over and over and over. We're finding these witnesses getting on the stand, finding out that there's been a uh, sort of preemptive strike in some sort of a prep interview where they're coming up with new opinions, new, uh, new conclusions, new facts. It happened with Jennifer McKay. This new fact about coming up, uh, going to, to Michael Lake's house. Uh, this um, it happened with Officer Sheriff coming up with a new determination about what was said or not said at the scene that we had never heard before. That was also in prep session of some sort, or I, I believe it was. And then this witness, literally, it's not even like just was it light out or was it dark out. This is a, a completely new opinion based on evidence that we presented both in open, or talked about in opening statement and have, have presented uh, variously throughout this trial. And this officer gets on the stand and now has a, a new central opinion about whether or not we're right and that taillight lens could be cracked. That's something that should have at least been reduced to writing. And even if it was reduced to writing, it should have been excluded because it's a, it's, it's a discovery violation. It's late. We don't have, a time, have time to prepare for it. And we're caught off guard. I use the word at that sidebar ambush, and I know that that rankles the court, and the court doesn't like it. But that's exactly what it feels like. Well, that's been used both ways here, right? So it, it's a word. Let's just take it out of here. Make your point. Okay. I'll, I'll see if I can come up with a synonym for it. Well, I, I, have, I like understand I your I understand your argument. So focus on just continue where you were, but. No comment whether I like ambush or don't like ambush. It's a word I've heard a lot on both sides. I understand, Your Honor. My point is the, the, the evidence that now is being sought should never be presented in front of a jury. Uh, we didn't have opportunity to get this in advance. Uh, this has it, it's at least very least been in the Commonwealth's possession for weeks. He took notes about it. He now says, well, I didn't take notes about that specifically. I don't believe that as far as I can throw it. I think he did take notes about it. He was shown the video. He provided a new opinion. Mr. Lally knew that he was providing a new opinion. And then he, the first time he discloses this opinion is in front of 
the 16 jurors, 15 jurors. Uh, we would ask for its exclusion, Your Honor. And I'll submit. All right, Mr. Lally. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, as far as the pattern, uh, especially coming from uh, counsel, uh, I, I simply find it laughable. As far as Officer Sarif, uh, I think what counsel is referring to was uh, testimony that was in his grand jury testimony. Um, he was crossed about whether or not it was in his report, but it was in his grand jury testimony. Uh, as far as Ms. McCabe is concerned, that was regarding uh, reciprocal discovery that was uh, given to the Commonwealth weeks into trial by the defendant and was then shown to a witness, which is perfectly permissible. Counsel asked a question of Ms. McCabe on cross, uh, and she was aware of the material based on the late disclosure of reciprocal discovery. So I, there's no violation there. Uh, as it relates to... Uh, and why I say laughable, Your Honor, is that I am still... I, I, don't, I don't like hearing you say laughable. Just understood. stick to what the arguments are. And <clears throat> With respect the, to this well, witness... Hold on. Quit the finger-pointing, name-calling, things like that, please. Yes. I know it's been a long week. It's been a particularly long day. But just focus on what you want to argue to me. And I apologize uh, to the court for that, Your Honor. Um, with, with respect uh, to this uh, testimony, it's well within his uh, realm as a crash record. Constructionist, uh, this is a witness who's uh, responded to and investigated uh, hundreds of crashes uh, involving uh, damage to vehicles. Uh, simply making an observation uh, of contact between two vehicles or purported contact between two vehicles on a video. Um, the force is self-evident uh, and whether or not uh, that force is uh, sufficient to cause the damage uh, that uh, he observed, personally observed, on the defendant's vehicle is well uh, within his expertise. Um, and, and should be permissible as far as for this witness to be able to testify to. Uh, what about the non-disclosure to the defense? The showing this video and asking for opinion. What about that? So, Your Honor, what I would say is I did not show this video and ask this opinion. This is a video that actually uh, the trooper mentioned to me that he had seen uh, over the course of while the case was pending probably over a year ago, uh, that he had seen that video. I What I showed him was the photographs of Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle uh, and asked uh, whether or not he observed any damage consistent with uh, uh, the damage to the taillight observing or popping up on Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle. Why wasn't that turned over? In hindsight, it should have been, Your Honor. All right. So it's late. I'm not ruling here. I want to review everything. I would like, I'm not obviously taking any of the evidence home with me. I would like, um, it, if it's possible, for what your IT person did on the expanding, like he did this second time, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see the tire move this time. So uh, I'd like that. I'd like that video, and I would like, what's the exhibit number here? It's uh, exhibit six. Uh, do you want just that video, Your Honor? And the pictures of the cars. Whatever was shown during this voir dire, I would like those emailed to me so that I can look at them this weekend while I'm deciding. Or put them on a flash drive right now. That's, that's what I'm <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We'll do a screen record and, and get it to the court uh, by email. Uh, we can do that. I just need an hour once we get back to home base. Okay. All right, Ms. Gilman, will you burn what you have for me before we leave somehow? Your Honor, I, I, if I could, I just want to close one loop. Okay. What I was referring to with Ms. McCabe, I want to make sure that this is clear because this has come up a couple of times. The only thing I was referring to, or what I was referring to, it's not the only thing, but what I was referring to with Ms. McCabe is after Ms. McCabe testified, days and days and days after she testified and she was excused as a witness. Then we got the report from Lieutenant Tully about the new information that she disclosed on the witness stand. In other words, she was cross-examined about it, et cetera. And then after she testified and was cross-examined and gone, then we got a report that predated her testimony that was in the possession of the Commonwealth, or at least in the possession of Lieutenant Tully. That's what I was talking about. I just want to make sure that we don't need to go into it any further. Did you want to add anything to that, Mr. Lally? No. All right. So I'll see you Monday morning.